Sponsored by Wing Wing Technologies, one of the highest button counts in the industry. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. Over the last few months we've really been concentrating on simulating aspects of the Ukraine-Russian conflict. For obvious reasons, that is an active world conflict. We've more or less come to an end to that, at least for the time being, which is great. It allows us to now go back in time and visit some really interesting history. Mid-1982, the Falklands conflict. I'm really lucky in the Grim Reapers group in that we've built up a selection of experienced ex-combatants. And the interesting thing is we've got some guys, obviously, from the British side. And we've actually got some guys from the Argentine side. So I want to look at reenacting sometimes from the British side and sometimes from the Argentine side. Today, it's from the British side. It is the attack on Goose Green. So 21st to 25th, May 1982, the British task force land in the north of the Falkland Islands, known to the Argentines as Malvinas, by the way, and the Battle of San Carlos commences. It culminates with the British taking San Carlos and landing their forces. After that, the next major step is to take on Goose Green, which is the second largest Argentine garrison on the island, housing the 12th Infantry Regiment with 1,100 men. The reason we had to take Goose Green was because our end goal was Port Stanley here. But we couldn't just go straight from San Carlos to Port Stanley because we would be vulnerable from our rear and our flank by the Argentines at Goose Green. So we had to take it. So, zoom forward to 28th and 29th of May, the Battle of Goose Green. The job of taking Goose Green was given to two para, that's the 2nd Battalion Parachute Regiment, around 650 men. We joined them when they are working their way from the north of the landmass towards the centre. This is the most accurate reenactment we can lay out with the information that we've been able to find. First, let's look at the Argentinian positions. This is technically the farm and the heart of Goose Green, this peninsula. It housed Lieutenant Colonel Italo Piaggi's 12th Infantry Regiment, exactly 1,083 soldiers. They temporarily resided in the buildings of Goose Green, but controlled the entire landmass with defences. Their defences were, of course, the nearly 1,100 infantry, plus an OTO Malara Mod 56 105mm howitzer battery, that's three guns positioned exactly there, we believe, also to defend from the air. Six 20mm Rhein metal anti-aircraft guns. We haven't managed to find exact locations, but we believe it's just to the west of Goose Green, and we've got these laid out around here. Next, the most potent air defence came from two radar-guided Ehrlichan 35mm anti-aircraft guns. We've got those guns here. We've got it in a different chassis to what they use, but they are the correct guns, and we believe that that is the exact position of those guns. Remember that this 35mm anti-aircraft defence shot one of the Harriers down. I forget the tail number, but it was flown by Bob Iverson, who went on to crash his Harrier GR3 somewhere down here, and he survived, didn't he, guys? Yes. And that was XZ998. Next, the British. On the west flank of the Isthmus, we have Bravo Company of two para, around about 100 men. They are tracking this western flank here and making good progress. They are encountering entrenched, by which I mean actually in trenches, Argentine infantry. And they're going from trench to trench, almost from what I've read, World War I style, often hand-to-hand -hand combat terrible way of fighting, working their way to Goose Green. Alpha Company, Charlie Company and Command Company are not having so much success. They've reached Gorse Gully, which is this depression here, and they're taking cover here under extensive fire from machine gun position and mixed Argentine infantry. The uh, Paris had been pinned down in Gorse Gully for quite some time. Their advance had been slowed right down, so they weren't up at their timeline. Clearly, they had been frustrated, particularly by the isolated machine gun nest you can see to the north of the uh, straight gorse line. Just That's the one. And he 
famously charged that machine gun nest on his own with his own submachine gun and he was shot in the process but it did prompt some action from the British they eventually broke through he was posthumously awarded the uh, Victoria Cross Roger. So this is all going to be happening. The artillery is going to be firing. Alpha, Charlie and Bravo are all going to be in massive combat. So we're going to come in with our Harrier GR3s. They were launched from the British Task Force north of the island. They're actually a little, little further out, but we wanted to move them in just to keep it a bit more doable in terms of time. Now, the strange thing is we can't actually figure out if three or four Harrier GR3s were active on this mission. Different books say different things, but today we've got four of them. For the keen-eyed amongst you, no, this is not a Harrier GR3. We do not have Harrier GR3s in-game. This is actually a more modern AV-8B, but in performance, raw performance terms, it's, to be honest, pretty much about the same. A lot of the avionics we will not be using. We have got the equivalent of BL-755 cluster bombs. We're actually using rock eyes here, but they're actually very similar. We've got tight explosive anti-armor rocket pods, uh, 2.75 inch, not identical, but similar to the what they would be using on the GR3s. And a pair of fuel tanks, and of course, cannon. We'll be taking off, we'll be flying down the Falkland Sound. We'll be attacking, as happened in real life, from the northwest and ingressed via Brenton Lock. Their primary target was the three 105mm howitzers here. We've muddled history up a little bit here. They actually did this before the point that you see here, but we wanted to show you the peak of the battle as well. And that's the mission we'll be reenacting. Weather on this day was terrible. Visibility was low, cloud was extremely low with varying degrees of rain. I will lead our flight. Our main opposition, obviously, is going to be the two radar-guided 35mm Ehrlichan. Now, in real life, these Ehrlichans were actually partially out of action because of artillery fire from the British, but we're going to have them perfectly in action in here. And, obviously, six 20mm anti-aircraft guns. It's going to be very difficult to find targets and to lay fire down on targets. And, obviously, like we said in real life, one of the very highly trained pilots was shot down. Uh, side note, Cap, um, there is the BBC incident where um, just before the attack, the BBC announced over the radio what their uh, what the British plans were. Yeah. So it says, during, during the planning of the assault of both Darwin and Goose Green, the battalion headquarters were listening to the BBC World Service, wow. and the newsreader announced the 2nd Battalion Parachute Regiment was poised and ready to assault Darwin. How do you um, make such a monumental F up? And on top of that, after the battle, the Argentine army officers and NCOs were severely punished because of the uh, brutal field punishment that they did to their own troops during this battle. So they were um, drastically demoralized as well. Yes, they were. Another factor here is that the British side had relied on, or the planning had relied on having, I think it was six or eight Chinook helicopters to shuffle troops around the Falklands. But of course, with the Atlantic conveyor being shot, they only had the one. So the British had to change their plans fairly rapidly, and that's one of the reasons for the delay. They had to try and uh, take stock and then re revise their plans to march across the Falklands instead of um, having some sort of transport. So that's where the political pressure came in for the military to sort of get on with something to make sure there was some sign of progress. And uh, later on, of course, you had the uh, troops moved by the ships down to, uh, God, I can't remember the name of the place, where they where they got bombed because they didn't have any uh, anti-aircraft support. Yeah. Uh, staff today, uh, Matrix is here as tactical advisor. Uh, pilots are Cannonball, Monkey, Violet and myself, and Scotty. Say hello, guys. Hello. 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 Uh, Buenos dias. Scotty will actually be in a scout gazelle taking off from this frigate here. He's not going to be fighting, but he's going to be travelling down the lock, and he's going to be eyes on target and trying to call in attacks, because, like I said, finding the targets is going to be, well, more than half of the battle here guys as usual we do this completely unscripted if we lose we lose that's just our niche in dcs but we're going to do the absolute best we can guys any predictions or final comments before we take off 50 percent aircraft loss 50 percent aircraft loss right you know i'll be happy if we get 50 percent aircraft loss guys we are aboard hms hermes we're going to take off and head south cannonball please take off roger set stuff up like i said we're in av8b's but it's the closest we can get at the moment. And it's near enough in terms of raw performance. Cannonball rolling. 
Got in the air. Monkey, you're up next. Woo! Dodge. Launch. Captain, final checks. Check, 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 check. Hey, Violet, uh, come aboard the deck. Coming. Cap entering left orbit. Oh, the visibility is so bad, guys. Pilot's pulling up. Hey, guys, I'm coming to find you. Still on the left orbit over the ship. Oh, Hello. Pilot, no. uh, commence orbit left. Uh, the major flight is to the north of the carrier. Cap. Tally, tally you guys. Yep. Is that you with uh, Christmas tree, uh, Cannibal? Probably, and my lights are on. I don't know if I'm the only one. Okay, I'm coming to pick you up. My lights on also. Uh, speed check, Cannibal. 292. Hey, Cannonball, I'm cutting Cannibal. across your port shoulder in, uh, in five seconds. How uh, do I turn on my head manner display? Can't. Violet, the rest of the flight is uh, to yeah. Angel's one. Okay, and anyway, a GR3 would not have had a helmet mount display even if this plane did have one. Right, guys, time for our cruise. So, waypoint one. I see y'all. Good. I'm heading into Falkland Sound. Okay, guys, I am um, about 370 knots. Is everyone okay with that? Yep. Okay. Well, 1,000 feet in descending for better navigation. Traffic, one o'clock. Is out. Is Oh, no, that must be Violet. Correction. Disregard my last. Alright guys, just doing a few more checks, a bit of a hurry takeoff. Uh, I need that. Sorry for the Matrix, if you have uh, Camilla Creek on your map, I suggest you uh, proceed to that point. Yeah. Bobby. Yep, all together. You said proceed to the creek? Vector about 130 to the east side of the uh, creek, and there's a point on your map called Camilla Creek, which is where the uh, two paras started out their operation from. Harrier flight, all good with the speed? Yep. yep. Uh, Roger, currently in trail. Right, entering the sound. Yep, good formation. Approaching the British ships in the sound, post San Carlos. And the Falklands are a lovely island, uh, lovely to look at, but unfortunately you never get to see it, Valley Viewers, because it always appears to be weather like this. No, it is nice on occasion. I am having some oh, slight issues. Sure, I can see you glitching about. If you have to get a new one, just get a new one and uh, catch us up. I can see you uh, glitching or doing something weird. Going to buzz uh, these guys, give them something to, pull up, pull something to do. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Mm -hmm. Best hope the uh, sailors' uh, aircraft recognition was up to scratch. Yes, I really hope so. Right, Cap yeah, is cool. switching to Waypoint 2, guys. Waypoint 2. After the fun they had with the RGs a few days ago, they're probably a bit trigger happy. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They were literally got their hands on any gun they could, strapped it to the deck rails, and were firing at those A4s. Uh, okay, we're taking a left here to waypoint two. We're going to be entering the lock soon. I'm at that hedgerow, so I'm just going to keep oh, in orbit and uh, come up yeah. to and hover. Open two on the nose. Seven miles. Charge your weapons, guys. Fence in. Yep. Great fence in. Cannonball fenced in. Ready for Matrix. 
yeah. like before Harry's inbound to it. If you can, guys, knock the external lights off. If you can't, don't worry about it. Not worth crashing over. Where's the switch? I don't know. Don't worry about it if you don't know. Left hand elbow. Cap switching to target waypoint now. Target waypoint. Nine miles to target. Yeah. Cap, unfortunately, I do have to go. Okay, bye, Spider. Cap, spike. Cannonball spike. We're in the lock. Oh, maybe here just a tad bit longer. Roger, try and get some bombs Any before you go. That's real life, I lead viewers, I'm afraid. Oh man, I am just getting hammered. Max oh. power. I'm trying to turn off autopilot. Auto hover. Look for the gun emplacements. That Gephardt is locking me up like a son of a bee. No countermeasure pods on this GR3, so it's just... Just flying. Have no visual on the target. On your right, low. Cannibal. Right. Get all those traces. And I'm going down. I couldn't get out of auto hover. Roger. I'll be uh, back up. Cap is off target. I did not release my weapons. Haven't found the target. Gonna go run in again. Tally, I've just seen it. I've just seen it out of the back of my eye. Cap going round. Get hard is firing. Water. Monkey running in. Are you out, Violet? Yeah, the the lag was just too much. For All me. right, then mine good try. Two men down, lady down, whatever. Okay, uh, well done, well done, well done. Gephardt was firing at me. That's good. BDA as soon as you can. Watch out for that Gephardt, it's mental. Tally your shot. Gephardt's firing at you, he's firing at you. What I have to do next time is turn down my graphics settings. Roger, Violet. Got ha infantry. Did you get the, any, uh, oh, I see there's guns firing. This is where I've got to go. Bye, Violet. Okay, Later, Urdekin's still firing. Later, Later, 20 mic Later. mic Ryan metals are firing. They are all firing, Green, guys. Get a from the west, low. Yep. Rockets. I can see the explosions of the howitzers. Running on the okay. highlights. Come on, show me where you are. Show me where. Uh, show me where you are. Where's that? There it is. There it is. There it is. Tally. Cap. I've got it padlocked. Cap is dropping on target. Two bombs. Pull the G. Pull the G. Pull the G. Yes, I got him. I killed him. I killed him. God damn it. That was good. 105's down, 105's down. Targets of opportunity now, guys. Cannonballs uh, in on target, hot. 
cap rockets. Cap hit. I'm uh, moving away to assess my damage. Cap's in serious trouble. Oh, I'm Bob Iverson. What are the chances? Shot down by the same freaking cannon. Guys, finish up the attack. Don't stay a long minute longer than you have to. Oh, Bob, get out, man. Okay, Bob survived, but I didn't. Good luck, boys. God damn it, I crashed where Bob did. What are the freaking chances? And I, I uh, reinforced. That is not scripted, value viewers. Oh shit. Uh, are you okay, monkey? You were burning for a minute. Yeah, hit. Okay, uh, egress back I lost. home. I lost. Drop your tanks and get back home, that's an order. Baker Vectors 350 for uh, Hermes. If he has to, divert to San Carlos. <laughs> Cannibal's hit as well, Cannibal. Okay. Yeah. Get back, guys. Fly this way if you get in trouble. Land at San Carlos. If you can get back to the carrier, get back to the carrier. Keep us informed. I'm going to do a VDA check. Matrix, what's the steer for the carrier? Uh, 350. Good news, guys. I'm at the battery, and all three guns have been taken out. Oh, as well as a bunch of guys. And some sheep. Did anyone else hit any so auxiliary targets? I got some soldiers. Well done. Yeah, the Gepard yeah, was I think hit, it took the tents. <laughs> the uh, Gepard was hit, but no damage. Roger. Well, the good news is, guys, uh, is anyone else crashed yet? Apart from... I'm yeah, not gonna... I'm Ah, oh, dang it. Right, we've lost more then. Cannibal, you're still going? Yep, still flying. It shows you how hard this operation must have been in real life, guys. Now, I was flying quite high and unrealistically, but that's because I you know, need to get footage. But these boys were flying low, just like the real RAF would have. And it shows how hard and dangerous these missions were. On the plus side, it looks like a fuel leak rather than um, engine damage, but you never really know. What's his distance to San Carlos, Matrix? Uh, 320, range 5. Would you rather go to San Carlos or try for the carrier, mate, uh, Cannonball? Uh, San Carlos would be better. Yeah, I think it's better. I don't know my vertical capability, and I used up a bunch of water on the takeoff. It's, a, it's longer than the carrier. It's better than the carrier to land. It's longer. We should be seeing San Carlos soon. 285 for three miles. Roger, airport in sight. Yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. That's San Carlos. That's exactly where it was in real life at this time, Valley Viewers. Um, try and bring back a Harrier. Oh, that's a short runway. <laughs> oh, yes. Welcome to Falklands. Welcome to Harrier. The enemy have uh, the enemy have poor Stanley, I'm afraid. The uh, runway was made of a top of um, aluminium mesh, wasn't it, guys, I think? Uh, yes, yeah, steel. Fierce steel planking. Oh, steel, was it, Roger? Yeah. Did that come in on the Atlantic conveyor, does anyone know? Or, yeah, know? They had loads and loads of it on the Atlantic conveyor. They had loads of other supplies on different vessels as well, so... Yeah. You don't want to know my success rate at landing this thing. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, we are not practice Harrier pilots, value viewers, as you probably uh, probably noticed. Don't worry, Cap will just cut it out. I will cut it at out. At least that's what I'll tell you. I'll splice in a bunch of uh, perfect landings. One surviving wounded Harrier GR3 on final San Carlos. We wish you the best. Nice. Full nozzles forward, full wheels brake. Well done, Cannonball. You brought it back. Last surviving. Very nice. One. Well done. Well done, guys. I'm chuffed with that ride. Let me just move away from this ghastly loud Harrier.
Right, guys, so in our reenactment with actual life flying, uh, Violet just didn't even make it because her friend needed her to go and do something, which is weird, but that's the way it goes. I was next to get shot down. I took it in the bop bop from the 35mm Orlican, just like Mr. Iverson did, and subsequently crashed, but I did bomb the howitzers, so I'm happy with that. I'm guessing you, uh, Monkey, just took some generic uh, shrapnel from various... Probably the Erdogan as well, because it's so freaking I good. I took on the Gepard and lost. Oh, you took on the Gepard, right. Okay, but well, there you go. And crashed. And Cannonball was wounded, but probably by the 20 mils. Uh, the Erdogan would have smashed him to pieces. 20 mils hit him. But he made it back to San Carlos, which is, of course, historically massively inaccurate. But we don't care, because that's the way we do it. I thought that was really interesting, and also I learned quite a lot as well, guys. Any follow-up comments? That was good. Yeah, and we had a better okay. success rate than I thought. I think I need to go and buy the Harrier mod. Ha <laughs> yeah, ha! See you later. Good ending, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you later. The main Grim Reapers videos are now being split between this YouTube channel and the Grim Reapers 2 YouTube channel. So if you want to see all of the Grim Reapers videos, please consider subscribing to both channels. And thank you for watching.